cuticles. Let's do this, HQ, this question one. Who won in the biblical tale of David and Goliath? Goliath, David, Carl. Carl, if your name's Carl, we love you. If your name's Goliath, we love you too. David too, we love all of you guys. In the all Jewish sleepaway camp tale, this David fought Brian Harkle, also known as the one fist fight I ever got into. I was actually victorious. Much like the soon to be King David was versus Goliath. David is our answer. 267,201 of you guys got that right. You know your Davids and 2,000 of you guessed Carl and God bless you. You know what? Let's do question two. Before even we do that, I have a little something to tell you. Quick, get your cat. We're talking extra lives. They keep you in the game after you and made this not happen to you. Get a question wrong. Earn them for free by playing five times in a row or by inviting your friends using your code. We wipe the slate on referrals for season three, which means you can reinvite your friends and get double the extra lives. Oh, it's like starting at a new school and calling yourself Alphonse. Hashtag fresh start. Q2. By definition, a person who expectorates while speaking is doing what? Waiting, hoping, spitting. Waiting, hoping, and spitting is the name of my autobiography. Put down your wands. This isn't Harry Potter lingo. If you're someone known to expectorate, I really hope you aren't a close talker, cause it's spitting. Spitting's the answer. Just a little spit in the bucket on that one, cause so many of you guys got that right. You knew what's going on. Hopefully you don't expectorate. 242,526 of you got that right. High five hug, you earned it. Question three, which of these places has a recognized monarchy? Denmark, Russia, Mexico. Ah, now I wanna travel. Gosh dang it, if I only had some more points. And speaking of points, what's the point of being royalty if you don't have total control? <laughs> Great Britain, <laughs> Brexit. Well, you can ask the royal family of Denmark if you want a recognized monarchy. Denmark it is. Shout out for my Denmarkians. 226,375 of you are You've made it on a Q3. You did it. Again, high five hug, pat on the back. High five yourself. Let's move on to Q4. Which of these words is part of the business acronym IPO? Overflow, price, or initial? An initial price overflow. That's called when I spend way too much money on Amazon.com. CNBC in the house, love that Kramer. If you have shares of a company during their IPO, you're gonna hope that the value goes through the roof. Initial public offering for the win. 186,083 of you guys can do a little happy dance because you, you won. Well, you won that question. Doesn't it feel good to say you won each question? Then if you lose later, you know, you, you, you know you're still smart. I'm trying to help you out. Here we go, Q5. Which of these is technically an ossicle? Lysosome, Schwinn, Stapes. I think I wrote a Schwinn when I was a kid. As an adult, you can do it when you're at all ages. There are three ossicles and just about everyone's got them. They're the bones of the inner ear, familiarly the hammer, anvil, and stirrup, but medically the malleus, incus, and stapes. As for lysosome and Schwinn, they're a vesicle and a bicycle. See, when I was talking about the bicycle, 105,354 of you got that correct. Oh my gosh, go back to your happy dance, pat yourself on the back, look at yourself in the mirror because you know what's happening, which is called question six. Which of these is not in the same family as the other two? Tobacco, tomato, or a cauliflower? Oh, I love the idea of plant families. It's so cute. Remember Veggie Tales? The nightshade family includes both tomatoes and tobacco, but cauliflower is in the cruciferous family. You did it, fam. Cauliflower it is. 90,535 of you guys got that right. But 94,000 said tobacco. I'm calling it. It's a savage question. El pregunta de savage, Dios mio. If you got them, smoke them. See what I did? Cause you said tobacco. Anyway, you earned a cigarette. Not like I'm saying it, as like a promoting it. Be healthy, friends. Work out a little bit. Question seven. By definition, which of these weather conditions is part of the weather phenomenon known as pogadip? Snow, fog, or hail? Snow, fog, hail. Hail, fog, snow. Pogadip. Fun words to say when you're hosting HQ. Sounds like a Game of Thrones word. Winter is coming. 
See, it's pago nipping. When ice crystals collect in the air, we get a dense winter fog. Oh, that's what that photo looked like. Fog is the answer. None of you were that foggy about it. You knew the answer on that. 125,213 of you did it. Very proud of you like a proud father. Well done, guys. Let's move on to the next question. I'm calling it eight. A complex of walls, thousands of miles long, once protected by what African kingdom? Timbuktu, Benin, or Lesotho? Literally the most fun words are happening tonight. I feel like I'm taking all the fun words. Anna Roisman, here we go. Timbuktu, more of a city within present day Mali than a whole kingdom. Lesotho is, a lar is larger than Massachusetts. So that would be a big wall. But this wall, check this thing out was big enough to protect Benin. Benin is our answer. Well done, guys. 45,515 of you guys got that right. I'm just gonna do a light savage on that. We're not gonna go crazy, but Timbuktu, a lot of you guys thought that was there. You should Google Timbuktu, see where it's at. Don't think it has anything to do with that giant wall. Let's move on to Q9. Which of these organizations has not won the Nobel Peace Prize? Greenpeace, Red Cross, UNICEF. One of these did not win a Nobel Peace Prize? These are like the most amazing organizations. Come on, the justice. The Red Cross has won three times and UNICEF has won once, but Greenpeace has never won the prize. 33,207 of you guys knew that was right. Congratulations on that. Man, these poor guys are standing outside of Trader Joe's just trying to get you to sign something and they don't even get a peace prize out of it. But you're gonna get question 10 right now. Which of these is the name of a cat in T.S. Eliot's beloved cat poetry book? <laughs> that exists. Mabel Meows, Quilliam Smith, Bustopher Jones. That is the sweetest names I've ever heard. I hope they're all right. It's not gonna be the case, but I do. My two cats are named after characters from a late 80s NBC sitcom. Sam and Diane, figure it out, adorbs. Old Possum's book of practical cats includes Mr. Mistopheles and Rum Tum Tugger and Bustopher Jones. These cats are dancing. We all won on that question. Bustopher Jones it is. 29,267 of you got that correct. That was perfect. Question 11, coming up. Just enjoying that joke. What does the government of Finland famously give all new mothers? A cardboard box, a disposable diaper pack, or a stroller? I saw a dog walking, or not walking, rather in a stroller today in New York City, and I wish I was him. Oh, Finland, nobody puts baby in a box except you, where they give a baby box, which has a mattress so the baby can sleep in it and close a cloth diaper, and thankfully has nothing to do with bird box. 26,039 of you guys knew it was cardboard box. You earned the ability and the desire and the chance to just Google some bird box memes again because they're still good, okay? Let's move on to question 12. If you suffer from enophobia, you'll most likely be revolted by what? Clowns, Cabernet, blood, or worse, all three of them together, imagination, stop. Okay, let's just say Olivia Pope does not suffer from this condition. Enophobia is the fear or hatred of wine. Wine is our answer. Cabernet, 20,744 of you earn the moment to just pop open some wine, pour yourself a glass, drink up, because we're gonna move on all together to question 13. And let's see what happens there. Which fountain does the lead actress in Fellini's La Dolce Vita splash around in? Jet Do, Bellagio, or the Trevi? You know, at my college every year, the freshmen, they jump from fountain to fountain. And I, of course, didn't do that. It's gross, it's wet, and there's germs. All of the above. But Anita Ekberg, play it. Marcello, come here. Hurry up. Boy, is she having fun. The Swedish-Italian goddess dips her toes in the Trevi. Trevi is our answer. 20,922 of you got that right. You guys know that movie. Well done. Okay, everyone say millennials don't watch old stuff. You guys know, I'm impressed. So impressed that I'm gonna keep the game moving. You've earned it. Question 14, the African capital that comes first alphabetically is located in what country? Ethiopia, Algeria, or Nigeria? All of them end with an I and an A. I can say things obviously. 
I know Trenton is the capital of New Jersey. Is that good enough for something? But few cities sound more mellifluous than Ethiopia's Addis Ababa. But the African capital that comes alphabetically is Abuja, which is the capital of Nigeria. Nigeria it is. 5,494 of you guys got that right again. 50,000 of you said Ethiopia, so it's a little savage there. Uh, so savage, we've only got one question left. The final question. Ooh, at the end of my Wednesday morning Pilates class, I own a mat, and I know you're not surprised. Everyone always claps. I mean, I like it, but who for? Like the teacher? That it's over? All I know is if you win today, please clap for yourself. I don't care if you're on the F train with AirPods, you're worth it. Final question, Q15. Which historical figures is depicted in a carving at the US Supreme Court building? Robert E. Lee, Oliver Cromwell, or Muhammad? This is a Smarter Day finale. There are a few groups of people who aren't happy about this carving. Even the man's diehard fans have spoken up to say, we're not really big on graven images of Muhammad. Muhammad is the answer, but I'm really big on saying this phrase, you just won HQ trivia. Five thousand eight hundred and sixteen of you guys are gonna go to bed as winners tonight, and that's pretty dang cool. Eighty-six cents is coming your way, so no one got anything eighty-six on this. You got the eighty-six cents. So let's look at our winners: Joe Turner, three eighty-nine, Pikachu, Scribblearian. I don't know if that's an avatar or a bow tie or what. Re two ninety-nine is just chillaxing on his real cool bed frame experience. 407 juice is like a daddy daughter thing. I like that, that's sweet, fast. Bison, unsurprisingly, has a picture of a bison in it. And unique calf, well, there's calves. I like that we're being literal tonight, guys. And literally, screen grab, print, and attach this victory to your college applications, because you just won on Smarter Day. Show them you got the goods. Aunt Becky, why? Stay and play for HQ Words next at 9.30 p.m. and come back for tomorrow's extra special Game of Thrones trivia, 8.30 p.m. The North Remembers. I've been your host, just another dude who looks like Mark Zuckerberg at a wedding, who really enjoys being here with all of you. David Magadoff, the only David Magadoff on Earth. Can back to LA, love you guys, peace out Cub Scouts. So, uh, that nudity joke about the HBO thing. So that's, uh, that was just a joke, right? Right? Okay. Oh, I'm just gonna do this in my dressing room. <laughs>